Hello and welcome to Rhema Praise again. We're so glad you tuned in to be with us. If you just happen to be tuning by the channel, and hey, stop it right there and just stay here with us. You're going to enjoy this program. And for all of our regulars, hey, hey, we're so glad to be able to see you again. Hey, can you realize, realize that this is the middle of December? I know, I cannot. It's Man. almost Man. Christmas. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, speaking of that, this is the last week that you're going to be able to order our, our health food devotional yes, and the, get it before, before Christmas. Christmas. That's right. So if you want to get this, uh, you know, you have to order it by December the 19th. Yes. And uh, you can go online to rhema.org mm -hmm. and order it. And if you order it by, by December the 19th, then it will, you will get it before you Christmas. You should get it before Christmas. That's what they tell us. Now, that's that, right. Now, you can't always depend on all the shipping people, but uh, <laughs> that's what they tell us. That's anyway. what they so, tell us anyway. So, hey, if you want to order any of our products, and remember, we you can go uh, there. Uh, and we have the, the store, yes. and we have a special on for all of our products. So if you want to get it, but this is the last week you're going to be able to, get, be able to ship it to you and get it there by like Christmas, Christmas, or at least they tell us they will. Okay? That's right. I can't, I'm not going to guarantee that, but that's what we've been told by the shipping people. That's right. All right. You know, honey, today you were talking about obeying his commands yeah, brings and, victory. You know, and I was, obeying wife's commands <laughs> brings victory, too. <laughs> well, it brings more happiness, right? Is that what I, is that it? <laughs> yes. But, you know, I was thinking about the fact that so many times, you know, the Lord is trying to tell us and direct us, and we're mm -hmm. not obeying what He is saying. Yeah. I was thinking about, this has been several years ago, but we were involved in a, a business tra transaction. Yeah. And as and it was kind of a critical thing. It was going back and forth, back and forth. It was on a, a sale. And, I, and it was like, we had to listen very carefully to the voice of God as to what to do in, in the next step of completing that business transaction. Right, right, right. And, you know, I just felt in my heart that if we didn't do the right things, that that thing would fall through. Right. But praise the Lord, you know, as we obeyed exactly what He said, even though sometimes it didn't make sense, yes. well, it brought victory. Yeah. In that transaction. You sat down and wrote a letter that Yes. Most everybody said don't do don't it. Don't do it. I know. But I know. it was the thing but that's what you felt in your heart. Yes. That's what you felt uh -huh. God saying to yes. and it was the thing that that broke that that yes. caused the deal to, to be go, to, go, to through. go through. That's right. And you know, sometimes we have to obey what God says. Yes. So when we go right now where I'm I'm teaching on a subject called obeying his commands brings victory. You know, sometimes many people are right on the verge of success and they give up. I'm sure that most all of us wants to live a, a successful life. Those that succeed are those that stay with it. You want a great family? Stay with it. You want a great marriage? Stay with it. You want a great job? Stay with it. You want to do well with? You fill in the bank, but stay with it. Whatever you want to do well in, whatever you want to succeed in, it has to be a commitment. It has to be something that you stay with. You know, more often than not, the very key to breakthrough in life is just staying with it. Here are some different people that have had, what different people have had to say about success. Success in life is a matter not so much of talent or opportunity as of concentration and perseverance. 
Bulwar said, the man who succeeds above his fellows is the one who early in life clearly discerns his objective and toward that objective habitually directs his powers. You know, the Bible has some things to say about perseverance. I don't know whether you realize that or not. How many of you have realized the Bible has some stuff to say about perseverance? Actually, perseverance is a character quality. And all of us need to seek after it, and we need to have it. Matthew 24, 13, first from the King James, New King James, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. Now, reading that from the Message Bible, staying with it, that's what God requires. Stay with it to the end. You won't be sorry and you'll be saved. You know, that's a little more into our, our language. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, New King James. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now, let's read that out of the message Bible. With all this going on for us, my dear, dear brother, dear friends, stand your ground. Don't hold back. Throw yourself into the work of the master, confident that nothing you do for him is a waste of time or effort. Second Thessalonians 2.15. The New King James, then I'll read the message. Therefore, brethren, stand fast, hold the, hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or our epistle. So, friends, take a firm stand. Feet on the ground, head high. Keep a tight grip on what you were taught, whether in personal conversation or by our letter. I like that. Keep a tight grip on what, on what you have been taught. Uh, in the Hebrews, it says, hold fast your confession. Here Paul is saying keep a tight grip. That's in two places. Evidently if you don't hold on to it, it can get, it can get taken from you. Hello? He said take, keep a tight grip. Uh, and in the King James, stand fast. Hold on. Then in James 1.12. James 1.12. Okay. New King James, blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let's read that same thing. James 1.12. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. After they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. You know, really, probably one of the most difficult things to do in life is continue to be faithful when we don't see any success, hardly. It seems when we don't see stuff taking place, then discouragement jumps on our shoulder and becomes a loud voice telling us, hey, it's not going to happen. You might as well quit. You might as well give it up. Now, let's look at, let, let, let's look at these disciples and, and, this, and these, this fishing story here. First of all, they have fished all night and hadn't caught anything. You know, in reality, they could have said to Jesus, hey, you know about teaching, we know about fishing, you stick to, stick to teaching and we'll stick to fishing. Hello. Don't look at me like that, that's the way some of us are. We know, uh, you know, we may not say that, but with our attitude and our actions toward the Word of God, we're saying that. We're saying Hey, you stick to your part, I'll stick to mine. You know, like, I, I don't know, somebody was asking me about something that, 
you know, something that needed to be done or something, and I told him, I said, hey, that's what you know. You stick to it. I know, I know, I know by theology and Bible and preaching. I'll stick to that, and you help me with, with that, and I'll help you on the other side, and we'll be all right. But there are too many people trying to do what they're not qualified to do. Oh, that's another subject to preach on, isn't it? You know, this is, like I said a while ago, this is sometimes our attitude. We tell, the, when the Lord tells us to do something, but the blessing comes when we do as Peter did. The blessing comes when we do what Peter did. Tell somebody the blessing comes when we do what Peter did. I want you to notice he didn't tell the Lord, well, there's no use. We already been out there. We fished all night. We didn't catch anything. We, <laughs> can't you see? They're washing the nets. They're cleaning up the nets. If you know anything about the commercial fishermen and stuff that go out, when they come in, they, they clean up all the riggings and clean up all the nets and everything and get them, put them back like they're supposed to be and get them ready for the next time that they're to go out to fish. Man, when I was 17, I was traveling with Dad out in, out in Oregon, and we was preaching at this church, and, and there, there was, a, they, we was on the coast there, and there was one of, the, one of my friends that I had met there, a young man, same age I was, and his dad was a commercial fisherman, and so they invited me to go out with them. And he said, now listen, we don't come in till a certain time. I don't care if you get sick or if everybody gets sick and so on. I got sick, oh Lord. <laughs> but I noticed when we came in that everybody just didn't tie the boat up and jump off the boat and run and get in their cars. They started cleaning everything up, cleaning the washing the nets and getting them all and, and getting them put back together. So when they started putting them out the next time they're 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 all stacked up like they're supposed to be so they just flow right off of with the cable and flow right off into the into the water if they're not fixed right they get they get tangled and then you got a mess on your hands you know he could have told him all that but he said if you say so i'm going to go back out there and I'm going to put the net down just because you said it. Isn't that what he did? He said here, Master, we toiled all night. We didn't catch anything. Nevertheless, what is he saying? It doesn't make any difference that we have toiled all night. It doesn't make any difference that we haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I'm going to let the net down. You know, I think there's some lessons that we can learn as we look at this scripture. We can look at the fact that they had toiled all night and they didn't have any success. Any success. You know what? I don't know about you, but I imagine that you're about like me and there have been some long nights and I've come up with an empty net. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Now don't let me discourage you with that statement because as long as we're in this life drawing oxygen on this earth, there are going to be some long nights and there's going to be some empty nets. But it's what we do after that that's going to make the difference. See, it makes no difference how much faith you got. It makes mo no difference how great a Christian you are. We are not immune from trials and troubles. If you won't quit, but will continue to do what the Lord tells you to do right here, then you'll succeed. Now, some people say, well, the Lord... Uh, the Lord didn't talk to me, tell me anything. Say, yes, he did, right here, 
Right here. Th this is him talking. Whatever he says here, that's him talking. Somebody said, well, well, but Jesus was right there, and he, he, he told Peter to let the net down. Yeah, if Jesus told me to do it. Well, wait a minute. We got his word right here, and he's telling us a lot of things to do. He said, if you will say with your mouth and believe in your heart, you'll get what you say. Oh, I don't know about that. Now, wait a minute. Let me, let me think about that for a minute. No, there's no thinking to it. Look at Peter there. He said, okay, okay, Lord. This is what the situation is, but because you've said it, I'm going to do it. We can look at the same thing. This is what the situation is, Lord, but because you said to say it and believe it, I'm going to do it, and now I expect to get a full net. Hello? Hello? Maybe when we find ourselves not getting what we think we should, or we find ourselves with empty nets, maybe it's not so much the matter of an empty net as it is an empty heart. Oh, that went over a big deal, didn't it? <laughs> there was a, a little illustration here. There was a teacher who actually did this. There was a teacher who once did a demonstration for his class. He took uh, one of these plastic three-liter bottles, you know, or two-liter bottles, one of these, you know, and he took the cap off and he took a, a rubber stopper and pushed it uh, and put it in there. Then he pushed a, a needle like that you'd air up a, a football or a basketball with. I mean, you know what I'm talking about, you know. You pump up a, you have to stick it in to pump up the basketball. And, uh, but instead of attaching it to a pump, he attached, a, he attached the hose to the needle like you do. And then he took it and he attached it to a suction pump. And he turned on the suction pump. And but for it very long, the plastic container just crinkled and totally collapsed on itself. So then he asked all the students why the bottle had collapsed. And of course there were various reasons and most of them implied that it collapsed because the air pressure on the outside pushing against it, it was greater than what was left in the bottle. And of course that is... That is partly true, the teacher said. But then he began to explain to them that in reality the bottle collapsed because it had nothing in it. In reality sometimes when we fail and sometimes when we don't succeed is it because it couldn't be done or is it because we don't have what we need on the inside of us? Oh, got you thinking now. I can see, boy, I can see those wheels just turning, turning, turning up here. But you see, many times the problem is not with God. It's never with God. And... You're not going to like this statement, but sometimes it's not a matter of the devil. It's a matter that as we go through life dealing with everything, it's like that suction pump that was pulling all of the air out of the bottle as we go through life and deal with life and deal with all the problems of life. When, if we're not continuing to refill our vessel with the Word of God, we end up with nothing to combat what is coming against us, and we fold up like that bottle fell folded up. 
Come on now. You, getting, you, you see where I'm going with this? You know, <laughs> you know, all of you can probably re relate with, you know, the, fi the greatest times of collapse that there is, cre it's created when there is an emptiness. Now, why do you think as pastor that I am continually encouraging you to worship not only here in the church, but at home. Put your worship music on. Sing, worship. I encourage you to pray here at church, but you see, you gotta pray at home. There's some people, the only time they worship, the only time they pray, the only time they read their Bible is when you're in church. Now, stop and think about it for a minute. How many, how many hours are you in church and how many hours are you out there where it's being sucked out of you as you're coming in contact with the things of the world? So you see, we just can't, it just can't be at church. What do we say? What do we say at the beginning? Obeying his command brings victory. Hello. You know, man, we could go on and on and on. The Bible is full of where when people did what they were told by Jesus, when they obeyed the word. Then they, their nets were full. You desire for your nets to be full? Is the obedience to what God is saying there? You can desire to have it, but is the obedience to what God is saying there? This is a question that everybody has to answer. Me, you, no one can answer it for us. If we do not see the met nets full immediately, don't quit. Let me leave you with this. Galatians 6, 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we will, rape, we will reap if we do not lose heart. The message. So let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. At the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up. Success comes whenever we do what he said. You know, obeying God's commands can put you in a position that will cause you to uh, be successful in the natural area as well as the spiritual area. I remember uh, a, a man that we know, very, mm -hmm. very close, very personal. Uh -huh. He was told not to buy a piece of property. He said, ah, no, you shouldn't do that. But he did it anyway, and that piece of property... Because that's what the Lord... Yeah, the Lord told him. Impressive. And that piece of property became the catalyst that propelled him into a development business. Yes, absolutely. And, but simply by obeying what God said. You know, uh, and sometimes to obey what God says goes against contrary. Absolutely. Well, I, I talked about it in the in the message. It was contrary to everything because Peter had fished all night. Yes. But it was contrary to everything to go back out there in the morning and drop the nets down. Yes. But he did. He told him, he said, okay, Lord, at your word, I will. Yes. And they caught 
two boatloads of fish. That's not right. just one, two boatloads of fish. So right. obey the commands of God and you'll find yourself in victory. Hey, remember, uh, the announcer is going to tell you all about it, but this is the last week you can order our health food devotion or any of our other material. Yes. Uh, you can order it and get it anytime, but I mean, if you want to get it before Christmas, Christmas. it's yes. got to be ordered this week. And you can go to uh, to uh, Raymond.org and go right to the that's right. to the bookstore area and all that's there. Everything's yes. there. And we are taking registration for Raymond Bible Training College. You can go to rbtc.org slash trendsetters and find out all about Rama. Oh, yeah. And, hon, I have been enjoying, you know, every year, we put the lights up. Yes. We have since, what, 1980? About 1980. Yeah. You know what I love to see? I love to see the little kids go through the park because, you, you know, you walk through the park oh, yeah. and see all the animated things. And yeah. I just love to see their faces. Hey, if you're in the anywhere close, come on down. They stay on till 11, about 11.30 on New Year's night. Yes. And they go off and that's it. Yes. We turn them on the Wednesday night before Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and turn them off on, on the New Year's night. And you know, we've on. even had people propose to... Uh, Oh, yeah, I don't know how many marriage proposals we've had out in the park. <laughs> yes, during the, Christmas. During Christmas. Yeah. It, it's just, it, it's a real festive time, and you want to come and be and a part of it. And actually, we have carriage rides on the weekend. Oh, yeah, on take. the weekend, mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a man who brings these carriages, uh -huh. and you can, and they take you around in the yes. carriage with the horses pulling the carriage, and it is just neat. Absolutely. It is a neat, neat deal. So come on and be with us. Well, it's time for us to get out of here. Yes. And I want to thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. This month from Kenneth Hagen Ministries, Health Food Devotions by Kenneth E. Hagen, a daily guide to spiritual nourishment for the soul. Written in a day-to-day -day devotional format, Health Food Devotions provides a daily dose of God's medicine, His Word, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. As you read and meditate on God's Word concerning healing, you can come to experience the joy of a life of good health, free from pain and disease. The daily readings include why people fail to receive, where does sickness come from, is God trying to teach you something, have the tenacity of a bulldog, healing starts in your spirit, God keeps his word. Kenneth E. Hagen's book can be yours for only $12.75 by calling right now, 888-PRAISE-8, or just log on to rhema.org anytime, day or night. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Ken and Lynette Hagen. Ken, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information, please write, call, or visit our website. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.